Good evening and praise the Lord. It is indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord once again. I am evangelist missionary Nadia Chandler Hardy. With me is my good friend and dear brother, the Superintendent Mosley Hobson, and we bring you greetings from Texas Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Ministers and Workers Conference. How are you feeling tonight, Elder? Listen, I'm feeling great. We just came out of our devotion period. This is night two technically but really nice kind of three, three. Uh, and mm -hmm. we're ready I'm in I'm in expectation and anticipation amen and I am, I am trusting that each of you out there in our live stream audience are ready to worship with us in the Lord we are expecting a high time once again in the Lord tonight amen and as uh, superintendent Hobson said this is night two but kind of night three of uh, a list of dynamic speakers the voice piece of God the mouthpiece of the Lord himself to the body of Christ. Amen. We kicked off Monday night, Monday night with our very own general mother and supervisor of the International Women's Department, Dr. Bob McCoon Lewis. And she encouraged us and challenged us to be faithful. Amen. Last night, Superintendent Johnson, amen, came to us, reminded us that we indeed have work, work to, to do, do and that help, help is wanted. Is wanted. Yes. And tonight? Tonight, we look forward to the awesome word that's going to come through the district superintendent of the historical uh, not historical city, but the Har Harvest Institutional. Amen. Out of Waco, Texas, none other than Superintendent Allen Dixon. We're looking for a mighty word tonight. Amen. And if you know anything about Superintendent Dixon, he comes with a fresh yes, word, a relevant word for the people of God. And so I don't know about you, but I'll be sitting on the edge of my seat anticipating to hear what the word of the Lord is on tonight. But before we jump into the service, we want you to help us out by spreading the word that this live stream is in action. And it is open to those of you here in the state of Texas, the United States, and across the globe. We need you to hit that like and share so that people know that the good news is being shared right here at Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, located at 5895 Benz Engelman Road in the great city of San Antonio, Texas, where the bishop and pastor, my pastor, is the Bishop Shelton Craig Rhodes, who is also our jurisdictional prelate. Listen, last night I know we asked for you to drop in the chat um, where you're joining us from, and Brother Paul Sterling, I see you. We wish that you could be with us yes. as well, but you are with us, amen, through our virtual platform, and we appreciate you being in our virtual sanctuary, and I just want to tell you, welcome. I see your comment, and I wanted to specifically call you out because you are a part of this worship experience, as is all of you that are joining us in our platform. So, tonight Night drop where you are joining us from. Last night, I guess we had what folk from New Jersey. We yes. had people from Las Vegas. Absolutely. One of our general board members was uh, was Bishop online Hankerson. from St. Louis, Missouri. Absolutely. Listen, it is the Ministers and Workers Conference, the second Ministers and Workers Conference of the Texas Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. And we trust that your day has been a victorious day in the Lord. You know, as I was sitting there during the devotional hour, Superintendent Hobson, the good song came to mind that the saints used to sing. I don't know if you all know it, but I, I could hear the old mother say, I've been saved all day. All day no yeah. evil have I done. And so we want to conclude and and cap the evening off victory in Jesus Christ as we go into our worship service. Absolutely. Waco, Texas is with us tonight. Appreciate you. Uh, Austin, Texas is sharing with us tonight. I see you, Temple. Great Design Temple uh, is with us on tonight. Y'all keep dropping where you're joining us from. I know you all don't want to hear us go continue to go on. You all want to join in in worship. But as Missionary Hardy said a few moments ago, get your plates out yes. just like we have our plates out, your cups out, just like we have our cups out because we're believing God's going to fill them on tonight. Amen. Let's get ready to go. Let's Come go on. Let's go into worship. District missionary of the district that this church is in, district missionary Mayor Hardy. Amen. And of course, the best for last, our bishop's missing rib, Lady Deborah Rhodes. Amen. Didn't forget about a bishop. Praise team, are you ready? All right, come on up. Hallelujah. 
Amen. All right. We might as well come on. Let's praise the Lord. Let's go a little higher on this on tonight. We came to lift him up and magnify him. Truly, he's worthy to be praised. The word of the Lord says that let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. So everybody inhale and everybody exhale. That means we have breath. So let's praise the Lord on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands up.
Now, uh, you actually, wow, you actually have one more selection. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm not directing y'all, but you are the Texas South Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Choir, at least some of them. Amen. On you, praise team. Bless your name, God. Amen. Pray for the choir as we come with a nice old school medley where everybody can get with us and praise the Lord even though more. And it's going to be under the leadership of Missionary LaQuatra Finney.
Hallelujah. I spent 23 years in the U.S. Army. I did a whole lot of things when I was in the Army. Some of them weren't so wise, like <laughs> jumping out of airplanes, perfectly good airplanes. <laughs> I, I, I saw a picture in uh, Dr. Watford's office, same thing, jumping out of airplanes, same patches on and I got sent to Japan during the war in Vietnam. And they decided that during the next Tet Offensive, I was gonna be sent to Hawaii because I was a valuable person. They didn't want to send me into the combat zone. They had put too much money and training in me. I was good, y'all. Amen. And while I was in Hawaii, I learned that the Hawaiians, when they barbecue, they don't do it in the backyard like we do here. They do it out front. So everybody can join in. Amen. And I loved it. But one day on a Fourth of July weekend, I was out barbecuing, and I took a drink of my favorite drink, some red Kool-Aid, and it started dripping down my mouth. My daughter looked at me and said, Daddy, what's wrong with your face? I realized that I was partially paralyzed. So I went to the emergency room. They called in a specialist and they decided to do some facial nerve stimulation uh, to make sure that the nerve didn't die. This was the seventh cranial nerve and it controls the face. 
And I went in the third, the fourth, and the fifth for stimulation. And on the fifth, when they put that little machine on, there was nothing. The nerve was dead. They rushed me into, the, into surgery. Eight hours later, I came out. I recovered a little bit of movement. But that's why when you look at me, you see part of my face paralyzed. And uh, while I was recuperating, now I'm supposed to be in paradise. I was on the island of Oahu working at Triple Army Medical Center. If you look at uh, some of the TV shows, you'll see this great big pink building. That's Triple Army Medical Center. That's where I worked in the critical care unit. And while I was recuperating, I got a call from my sister. Mama's in the hospital. She's not doing well. You need to come home. Even though Hawaii is considered part of the United States, it's still considered an overseas tour. So in order to get home, I had to have approval from the Red Cross. Red Cross sent somebody to my mother's room and asked her how was she doing. And you know how, what her answer was, of course. She says, I'm fine. That's the word that went back to Hawaii. She's fine. We're not going to let you go home. Two days later, I see all of these people with suits and ties walking down the corridor to the intensive care unit. Fortunately, we didn't have any patients. But I knew who they were. They were representatives from the Red Cross to come to tell me my mother had passed away. They were upset because they said, we had a chance to get you home and wouldn't let you go. I've had a problem with the Red Cross since then. I still give blood, amen. But paradise was supposed to be a wonderful place for me. The most beautiful island over there in Hawaii where They've got Gucci stores and Coach stores and sell all of this fantastic, those fantastic things. I, on my way to work, I would pass a pineapple field. It says it was Dole's. Amen. Dole's pineapples. And there were miles and miles and miles of pineapple. Amen. But I got paralyzed. I lost my mom. And I hated Hawaii. But I decided to get through that hate. I invited my wife, that lady sitting right there, to go with me back to Hawaii. We didn't go to Oahu. <laughs> we went to the big island, the one where the black sand beaches are, the island where the uh, volcanoes are still active. And I saw something that amazed me, Bishop. The lava came up from the ocean, made its way to the land. It cooled off, turned into like black tar. But then I saw plants starting to come up through the tar, trees growing, amen. And I realized as bad as things had been with me, God was still able to give me new life. And he's able to give each of us eternal life. Now, while you're in this mood, it's time for us to give. Amen. We're going to invite Superintendent Johnson up, and he's going to take us from here. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Certainly we praise God on tonight. Amen. We're thanking God. Amen. I heard the choir so earlier. What do you want the Lord to say? What do you want him to say? Well done. Thy good and faithful service. Amen. Amen. We've got to live this life so we can hear him say just that. Amen. Certainly we do honor the Lord tonight. We give honor, amen, to our jurisdictional prelate, amen, Bishop Shelton C. Rhodes. Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord for him. 
Amen. For our, amen, supervisor of women, amen, Mother Yolanda Ford, amen. God bless you. Thank God for our first lady on tonight, amen, Lady Deborah Rhodes. And, and to all of the saints of God, amen, our assistant, amen, supervisor, and the first and second assistant, thank God for each of you. For all of these superintendents, amen, thank God for you. The pastors and elders on tonight, amen. We have come together, amen, just to be in this conference, amen, in this revival. I don't know about you, but I've been refreshed already. I've been renewed already. And somebody says the best is yet to come. Thank you, God. I'm just enjoying myself in the Lord. I'm just having a good time. Thank you, God. Amen. I'm enjoying hearing and feasting on what God has for us. If you missed the day session today, you missed a treat. I tell you, it was so grand. Amen. But tell your neighbor, you got another chance on tomorrow. Amen. We're coming back on tomorrow, but it was so rich on today. Amen. We thank God. Thank God for each of you. We're getting ready to give. Amen. That was a place where you clap your hands and say, thank God that he has helped me to be able to give. We'll try one more time. We're getting ready to give. All right. We're getting ready to give. Always be grateful that God has blessed you to be able to give. Because there was a time, there was a time where I didn't have to give. Thank you, God. Married, amen, with a couple of kids and didn't have, didn't have 25 cents to my name. Come on, step up and say, but God. but God. But God, he's able to turn things around for us. And certainly we thank God for each of you. Amen. We want to just give you the quick line up here. Amen. The, on tonight, all of our elders, we're asking them for $20. Amen. Our ministers, $20. Actually, our pastors for $35 and our superintendents for $50. The women have been asked, amen, aspirant missionaries for $10, missionaries for $15, and our district missionaries for $20. the gospel there is beloved we don't need to preach nothing else just preach the good news of Jesus Christ that will save that will heal that will deliver preach the gospel and heal every and they were healing everywhere that's Luke 9. When you look back, that's Luke 9. See, Jesus set them up. He didn't send them out empty-handed. They had authority. Somebody shout authority. As believers, we have authority over the enemy. He didn't send us out empty-handed. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And we will be witnesses. Somebody shout, I'm a witness. Witness. For my Lord. So the 70 messengers return. They return. Look, hear this, hear this, hear this testimony. And I got to stop. I'm out of time now. The 70 return in, in, in Luke 10, verse 17. And, and the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject through thy name. The subject unto us through thy name. And they didn't know they were setting themselves up for rebuke. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all, somebody shout all, all. over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you.
Listen, praise the Lord, everybody. On your screen just a few moments ago, you were witnessing last night's worship experience and the word of God from our administrative assistant, Superintendent Michael Johnson of the Greater Waco District and the pastor of the Agape Church of God in Christ in Killeen, Texas. And look who is standing right next to me, none other, amen, than him himself, him himself, amen, he himself, amen, Superintendent Johnson. It's so uh, such a pleasure to, to, to have here. you here Amen. with us. Thank Listen, you, can you just take a moment and just say hello to our online audience yes. and uh, greet them, and then we'll come back and just really talk about last night. Amen. So grateful to be here, and thank God for all of you that are tuning in on tonight, and what a blessing it is to be able to connect over the internet platforms that are going around the world, and we do appreciate you tuning in to be a part of, this, of these sessions all week long, morning, noon, and night, and I'm so grateful to be here tonight with uh, Superintendent Hobson. Today, he did an excellent job during our uh, noonday training, and I enjoyed myself, Sue, and enjoyed your impartation that you gave us, and it was a blessing for me, so I'm grateful to be here tonight. Listen, we are on fire, as Missionary Hardy and I said as we started this uh, broadcast tonight. Night one really started on Monday night during yes. our Emerald celebration with Dr. Barbara McCoo Lewis, mm -hmm. the general supervisor of the Women's Department for the Church of God in Christ, and you said something as you were closing out that service, yes. you felt as though she passed or was passing the baton, baton. to you yes. to take us into our second night. Yes. Last night you preached from the text, there's certainly work to do, yes. but help is wanted. Can you just talk a little bit about yes. what inspired really to, yes. to for you to just really put that message together and why that was a right Amen. network? I believe that God was giving us a summons to uh, get into the process of what it takes to be involved, to bring about change. If you want change in your world, you got to be willing uh, to roll up your sleeve and be a part of the process. And God was giving us an opportunity by saying that, that he's going to that we should pray that the harvest, you know, of course, will be gathered in, but it's going to take some labor, those that are willing to labor with people. So the opportunity was given on last night. Our, our presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ has given us that, that mega thank theme. You, yes. We've got work to yeah, do, and yeah. thank God for Bishop Rose. He picked up on the same theme, and I really believe if we want to see change, we got to get involved in the process, and there is a whole lot of work to do. Absolutely. Amen. And, you know, and oftentimes we get so comfortable with just really Inva uh, evangelizing in-house and just yes. really continuing to encourage the saints, which the saints need encouragement. Yes. But one thing that really stuck out to me, and of course being the former uh, president for evangelism, was you talked about even the guy on the street, yes. how that is a soul also. Because oftentimes right. we will look at people who don't look like us, dress That's like right. us, maybe be in the same status as us, right. and just walk right by them as That's though right. they don't That's even right. exist. We're reminded of the story in the Bible where the man sat at the gate begging alms of those yes. that were going into the house of prayer. Yes. Just talk a little bit about really the importance of engaging yes. uh, people that are the least of these. Amen. And you know, we saw in that text that man that got healed of his blindness was seated at the at the gate. He was also there uh, present many, many days before this uh, healing service took place. And, and after he was healed, some started to question his testimony. Was that the one we saw uh, that was standing around? And that was he. And he made it known, yeah, that was me. I got healed, and now I see. And praise God, of course, he gave his own testimony. His parents was afraid to be kicked out of the temple and all of that. So his parents didn't say, hey, he's old enough. Let him speak for himself. And he did. He gave his own testimony. I believe Superintendent Hobson, praise God, if we get involved in someone's life, God is going to change that life. And they will give their own testimony of the transforming, uh, transformation power of God that has taken place in their life. And we see this taking place over and over. Wow. If we willing to be a part of the process. Yes, yes. Well, Sue, we appreciate, Superintendent, we appreciate yes. you being with us tonight. Come Thank on, y'all in, uh, in this chat, would you all just show some love to yes. our administrative assistant, Amen. Superintendent Michael Johnson. Amen. And as I said on last night, if you're in the Colleen uh, or Central Texas area and you need a church home, Please look up Agape Church of God yes. in Christ. Amen. Right there, Little Nolan uh, Road. That's right. Right there in the city of Colleen, Texas. That's right. Uh, and I guarantee you that he would love you and yes. wrap his arms around you and receive yes. it. Thank you again. Amen. Thank you, Superintendent, for being with us. Thank Listen, you for on the screen Thank right you. now, we're telling you the ways to give. Uh, as you, as we are in our worship experience uh, in our offertory uh, period, you have the opportunity to serve as well and give on tonight as well. 
on the uh, screen, you see the two ways to give. Cash app, dollar sign, TSW2NDOPS is our cash app handle. And then on Givelify, Texas Southwest 2nd Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, uh, where we are located at 5895 Ben's Engelman Road uh, here in the city of San Antonio, Texas. And again, remember, we were Texas Southwest proper. You may see that on the handle, uh, but look for Texas Southwest 2nd. Texas Southwest 2nd and give to that platform. Again, we appreciate you because we believe that you're sowing into good ground and i'm believing amen the lord of the harvest for your return amen on tonight as we transition there are uh some things that are happening in across the world actually our presiding bishop the bishop j drew sheard uh chief apostle and presiding bishop of the church of god in christ uh is uh certainly instrumental in wanting to see our communities grow i have supervisor sophia strother lewis the supervisor of Senegal, Gambia, West Africa jurisdiction with me here. She's also the national liaison really briefly because we don't have a lot of time. But could you just really talk about what's happening April the 13th? Yes, I'm super excited to talk about this nationwide initiative called the 100 City Community Impact Day that's being presented by our presiding bishop, Jeju Sheard, in conjunction with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. And basically, our goal is that we can impact over 100,000 lives in one day on April 13th, where all across America will be hosting from either 9 to 3 or 10 to 3 workshops on how you can become a homeowner, um, lawyer services, tax preparation services. We're going to have blood drives, mental health, spiritual health, all of those different things, all free. You're going to be able to get those resources in your hand, how to get down payment assistance to get that first home, how to, what to do with Big Mama's house, yeah. you know, when you're being left something, really how to set up generational wealth. Yes. And that's really what we're trying to do, a Black Wealth Tour, basically. Basically, yes. is being able to cut down the generational curses of poverty. And so we're going to be addressing that, and we're so grateful that our presiding bishop really had the fortitude to do that. But we're excited because yes. Bishop Shelton Rhodes with Texas Southwest Second is participating with that, and so aren't you, Superintendent yes, Hobson, so, in the Austin area. So we have two of those ministries in our jurisdiction that will be participating in that 100-city community impact day. And you got to be there. You can't miss it. Yeah, free 99. Free 99. Free 99. On the screen while she was talking, <laughs> you saw the flyer for the Austin event. Again, so, uh, Praise Cathedral here in San Antonio is also a host hub. Uh, again, more information is going to be forthcoming as we continue yes. throughout the week. So please keep your ear to the ground so that you might be able to hear. Again, so many of our black and brown communities have been disenfranchised yes. uh, in the housing area, and we certainly want to be a catalyst to, to uh, give them information that they can use to benefit them and their family as they continue to move forward. Yes. Again, we're getting ready to transition back into our service, but two ways to give on your screen right now, cash app, dollar sign, TSW2NDOPS, and also through Givelify, Texas Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, uh, 5895 Benz Engelman Road. I promise you tonight you want to sow your seed because I believe that he is going to cause your harvest to come forth. Tonight you do not want to miss it. Get ready for the word of God coming from the district superintendent of Harvest Institutional yes, District. Gonna be good. Amen. It's going to be good. Superintendent Alan Dixon. Yes. Who is coming tonight to deliver the word and we want you to be a part of we want you to be a part of that moment. Amen on tonight. Um you don't want to miss it. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, later on in the week. But on tomorrow, tomorrow night, the Ooh. presiding bishop, the chief apostle for the Church it. of God in Christ is going to be here. right here. Right here. And it is amazing to see how uh, he has been instrumental again in wanting to see our communities, our local churches grow. Not only does Supervisor serve as our national liaison for this uh, initiative with the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, known as NARAB, uh, she also serves in our um, urban initiatives group. And yeah. certainly, again, there is so much work that is happening around mm -hmm. the, the world in the Church of God in Christ. Just talk about a little, a few things that are being highlighted through Yes. Oh, I would love to. Under the leadership of Dr. Anthony Coleman, we have partnered with the Moms Tour, where we're going around nationally, partnered with um, Kojic churches as well, yeah. hosting community baby showers that are meant to really empower families and give them um, access to care and resources. We're also going to be doing the Fathers and 
Faith Tour, where we're going around and truly building up men, giving men a platform and the support that they need as well for their homes and communities. And then we have our Financial Legacy Summit, which this is a part of that, being able to go out there, help people. What is it? What does investing look like? You know, what does it look like for credit? Again, everybody gets hung on that, but there's a lot of resources out there that can be provided to you for free for you be, to be able to do that. And then the One Million Black Business Initiative, where you can get free resources to start a business, write your business plan, and get funding for that business as well. So there's a lot of great things coming out of Urban Initiatives. And we have a very progressive leader, Bishop yes. Shelton Rhodes, who just really wants to also see the, our communities grow. We're getting ready to go back into our worship experience. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving tonight. I'm praying over your seed, and I'm praying that God would return it 100-fold. We're believing it in Jesus' name. Let's go back into our service. Tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. sharp. Our, our own, the most reverend J. Drew Sheard, signing bishop of the Church of God in Christ. Praise God. He will be with us on tomorrow night. So come early. Don't come at 730. Come early to get your favorite seat. Praise God on tomorrow night. Communities coming out from all areas of the state. So come and be with us on tomorrow night. Praise the Lord. On Friday is Women's Day. Right. Praise God for the women of the Lord. Amen. The service will begin at 9.30 a.m. Praise God on Friday with prayer. And we will hear from our own supervisor on Friday morning. The superintendent's meeting will begin at 9.30 a.m. Council of uh, Pastors and Elders will begin at 10.30 a.m. on Friday. Amen. And on Saturday, 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 Sunday school, 8 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen for Sunday school. Under the direction of our own superintendent of Texas Southwest 2nd, uh, Pastor Daryl Martin, praise God. And the official hour, praise God, 10 o'clock a.m., our own prelate, the Bishop Shelton Craig Rhodes. Amen. We are praying for him as we go through this week. On Friday night, praise God, as I digress, 7.30 p.m., Bishop Disarray Bell Sr. will be here with us on Friday night. He is with Texas Gulf Coast jurisdiction. Amen? Praise God. Now, some of you have checked into your hotels, and you may be having some issues there regarding your taxes. We have the tax exempt form here at Praise Cathedral. Please stop by the General Secretary's office, Elder Watford. We have the Texas Comptroller information for you and the exempt letter that's available for you if you need that for your hotel. Amen? Praise God. Let us not forget about our scholarship for Texas Southwest jurisdiction second. Amen? Uh, it's already open. Applications are due in no later than April the 8th. April the 8th, you have to meet the deadline. You must meet the deadline in order to be a participant for this year. All right? And generally, those scholarships are given out, award ceremony during the July Holy Convocation. If you have any questions, please see Dr. Kenneth Fly. Amen? He is the committee chair. On tomorrow, Texas Southwest 2nd, uh, 49 and under, amen? All women, 18 to 49, up to 49, all right? Can we chat? Uh, this is under the direction of the president or the chair, Missionary Sheila Berry. Uh, that will begin at 9.05 tomorrow morning, amen? Come prepared for exciting discussions and questions that's relevant to today's issues and spiritual growth and development. So please stop by on tomorrow if you're in that age group. Amen? All right, the Sunday School Rally. All right, Texas Southwest Second Sunday School Rally 2024. Theme, we've got work to do. And guess what? Our president, our vice president of the Sunday School International will be with us on that particular day. So come out. Registration is $20. Registration is already open. So please stop by. You can pick up your T-shirts 
are available for you at $25. Amen? Pastor Martin is here, and some of the team for AIM is here. Amen. The chair. Amen. So register for the Sunday School Rally. You don't want to miss it. All right, the attire for tomorrow, uh, Thursday, March 21st. This is for the women and for the men, for the brethren. Dress code for the clergy is the civic attire. Amen. For the elders, pastors, district superintendents, check your emails. That information should be available to you. For the women on tomorrow night, black attire. No habits on tomorrow night. Amen? Praise God. And on Saturday, March 23rd, our official day, our dress code for the clergy, elders, the civic attire with the tippets is to be worn by all on that day. Dress code for the women, black habits for the credential holders, black dress is for the other women of the Lord, other missionaries. All right, registration for the April uh, 24 General Assembly. Uh, if you want to participate or register, as Elder Watford has sent out information, you have to go into the art system and register. The latest date that you can register is March 22nd. Amen. Also, for your credential cards to be mailed directly to you, you have to have your information should be correct in the ARC system. Guess what? It's up to each of you to get that information. You have to update your information yourselves in the ARC system. All right. The last, well, I have a couple of more. Tonight in the food court. Uh-huh, I hear you. Loaded baked potatoes are back tonight. Okay, chicken or brisket with the fixings, only $10. The sausage wraps with chips, $5. Nachos, $5. But they've added some fried fish with some macaroni and cheese and green beans, only $12. Amen? Chicken salad on croissant with chips is also available. So let's stop by the food court before you leave tonight. Before you leave tonight. Amen. Not right now. Not before the word. Praise God. But before you leave. All right, Lady Deborah Rhodes and the Praise Cathedral Women's Department presents their second annual Women, Inspiring Women, Women's Conference, and the Girls Inspire Conference, scheduled for Saturday. Mark your calendars, August 24th. Uh, be on the lookout for more information on the website. Praise God, it's inspiration, education, and celebration that you don't want to miss. For additional information, please see Sister Tiffany Wilson or Sister Nicole Ross. Let us not forget about the mobile blood drive right here at the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ that is scheduled for Saturday, April 13th from 9 o'clock a.m. until 2 o'clock right here. Praise God. If you have questions regarding that, Please see Elder Allen. May God continue to bless you real good is our prayer. Thank you. What a surprise. <laughs> I did not know I was going to do this tonight. But it's a pleasure to stand here tonight too introduce our leader. But first of all, I want to give honor and glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of my faith. Praise the Lord. I want to give uh, thanks to all these superintendents, pastors. I want to give respect to our mother, Mother Alonga Ford, and her assistants. Praise the Lord. I want to give honor to the women of the Texas Southwest Stewart Jenkins II. Second jurisdiction, praise God. And I want to say to you tonight, my health is getting better. And uh, I'm going to be able to travel. I want to go to Memphis. Uh, I feel kind of hard not being able to go like I want to go, but I'm getting there. And uh, I don't take this job to be uh, little, but I take it serious. And I am saved, sanctified, and be with the Holy Ghost. 
and I, and I have work to do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And suddenly, uh, I worked on the bishop for 21 years. Never gave him no problems. I'm an older man than he is, but I never gave him any problems. I remember one night when we uh, were at um, Manasseh in a conference, and I called a man up to preach, and he wasn't scheduled to preach during the minister's hour. And uh, he called me back in the office, and he chewed me out. But you know what? I said, yes, sir. I respect leadership. Always have and always will. Because you can't lead if you, you're not able to follow. And uh, I have a deep respect for Superintendent Rhodes. I believe he's concrete, sound, and real. He don't treat somebody different than others. He treats us all the same. If you got a problem, he'll be there to help you. Not only will he help you solve your problem, but he'll help you in other areas. I recall when we first built the Belton Church of God in Christ, we didn't have enough money to uh, really fix the parking lot. And I sat out under those trees and I prayed, Lord, make a way for me. So I asked for the favor of Bishop Rose. Bishop Rose came through. Praise God, he came through. And I helped us. I kept on praying, and we had some property on the side of the church over there done. Uh, Belton Independent School District need to buy some property. And uh, the superintendent was going to come out and talk to me. I had already talked to Mitchell Rose because he's a financial genius. He said, this is what you should charge him. So when he came down, the, the superintendent said, uh, we're going to give you $20,000 for that land. I said, no, sir, you can't. You're $60,000 too short. Because Mitchell Rose already instructed me how much to charge you. So I, I said, uh, they gave us 87000 for the property. I took and paid Bishop Rose the money back, paid the parking lot, and put $40,000 down on the church. Praise God. I want to say that Bishop Rose is a man of integrity. He's a man of honesty. And he's the man that we need for such a time as this. We need a leader, we need great leadership right now. I'm an old man, but I still need leadership. Praise God. And he, he's out front. He don't tell you something to do that you don't do yourself. And what I like about him is the time he be traveling, he'll call me and say, he said, uh, this is a good time to talk? I said, yes, sir. He said, doing a good job. I said, thank you. Then he leave you with this. This is what pushed me. He said, keep on doing what you've been doing. Keep on doing what you've been doing. Praise the Lord. We got a great superintendent. We got a great superintendent. And I heard somebody say today, we got the right one. Amen. Praise God. I'm so glad they had the right one. Amen. And I present to you, without any further ado, our Bishop, Bishop Sheldon Craig Rose. God bless you. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus all over the house. Put those hands together for Jesus all over the house. Somebody say, to God be the glory. Somebody say, to God be the glory. What a blessing. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What a blessing it is. Amen. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you. We certainly honor the spirit of the Lord on tonight. Amen. You that are present, you that are viewing by stream around the world, we thank God for you joining us here. Amen. At Texas Southwest 2nd. Amen. 2024 Ministers and Workers Conference. One more time, let's give Jesus a hand. Pray God. What a blessing it is, amen, to have with us tonight our administrative assistants. want to thank God for our superintendent Amen. Michael Johnson. Amen. Superintendent F.O. Patterson, administrative assistants, doing a wonderful job. All these wonderful superintendents that grace the rostrum on tonight. Pastors and elders. Pray God. We want to appreciate Amen. The cabinet of Texas Southwest Second. Come on, give God praise. Amen. For our jurisdiction. Thanking God for our supervisor women. Amen. Mother Yolanda Ford. Come on, saints. Come
Come on. Pray God. Thank God for our first lady, Sister Deborah Ann Rhodes. Amen. First lady of the jurisdiction, 37 years. Amen. In July, July the 18th will be 37 years. I want to thank God for First Lady Dick Dixon on tonight. Her husband's going to bring a word in just a little bit. Amen. For us, Supervisor Stroja Lewis, I want to thank God for you. The assistant supervisors, first assistant supervisor, Mother Deborah Taylor. Pray God. Amen. Second, amen. Thank God for Mother Hazel Williams on today. All the district missionaries, first ladies, saints, and friends. It's a blessing to be, again, in a setting as we come to our second uh, Ministers Workers Conference since the inception of our great jurisdiction in 2021. It's a blessing. Amen. 2022 is when we really got started. Amen. It had been sanctioned by our General Assembly on December the 20th of 2021. And God blessed us to hit the ground running in 2022. And to him be the glory. How many have enjoyed this choir tonight? How many have enjoyed the choir all week? I know it. this is the second night, but they started in on uh, Monday night during uh, Mother's, our supervisor's Emerald uh, banquet celebration. It was very nice. Come on. Pray God to have with us none other than the general supervisor of the Church of God in Christ incorporated around the world. Amen. Dr. Barbara McCoo Lewis was with us on Monday night. Pray God. We're looking forward to our presiding bishop being with us tomorrow. Come on in some our presiding bishop and chief apostle of the church of God in Christ. Bishop Sheard, if you're listening, we're looking forward to you being with us on tomorrow. I want to appreciate you, uh, Superintendent Barry, amen, for that presentation, introduction on today. He kept saying superintendent, and that's fine with me. That's fine with me because he served with me faithfully, amen. I was his district superintendent. I served him as district superintendent for 21 years, amen. He was right there. Come on in, sir. He was right there. He was, <laughs> however you want to call it, pray God. He once was young, amen, Joshua and, and Caleb, and, and, and just stood right there with me. And I just thought it befitting for him to take on the Greater Temple District, and he's taken it higher since he's, since he's been at the helm, praise God. I want to appreciate him and his lovely wife, Mr. Sheila Berry, doing a great job. All of our superintendents doing such a wonderful job, amen, leading, amen, by precept up an example, mother and the district missionaries leading, leading out this great jurisdiction. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Let me say before I go there, before I go there tonight, let's put our hand together for our former leaders, amen, the former Texas Southwest, amen, the late Bishop T.D. Iglehart, the late Bishop S.E. Iglehart, praise God. When you look at our logo, when you look at our logo for Texas Southwest Second, amen, when you look at that, at the very bottom, you'll see two initials. One of them is TDI. If you look at it very closely, two red initials. One says TDI, and the other one says SEI. Pray God, from that, you'll see branches coming out saying that one planet and one water. One stands for T.D. Iglehart, the other stands for S.E. Iglehart. You never forget, pray God. God, the, the ones that God has used to bring you over. One plant, one water, but God give the increase. Let's never forget our leadership, pray God, who God gave us for such a time as that. I want to certainly put it on our minds, amen, on April the 13th. April, somebody say April the 13th. I want to echo this, pray God, because this is an initiative that our presiding bishop has for us, amen, um, uh, around the world. He's looking for 100 churches, amen, 100 churches throughout the Church of God in Christ Incorporated, and we each are tapping into at least a thousand people each. Amen. For impact day. A day, pray God, when you, when the people of God, amen, our bishop, our, our uh, chief apostle, he's concerned about the total man. Somebody say the total man. Spirit, soul, and body. <clears throat> On that impact day, March 13th, it would be one would be right here at Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, 5895 Benz Ingerman. And there on that day, we will have uh, creditors will be there, bankers 
speakers will be there. Amen. Our municipality leaders, mayor's office, and all. There will be housing programs available during that day. Small business administration. Pray God for entrepreneurs. Amen. And those that have their businesses need to be empowered. Amen. Housing for those that, amen, are looking to move beyond multifamily housing apartments into home ownership. First time home buyers. Amen. All of these things, a blood drive. Amen. Right here at uh, San Antonio, right here at Praise Cathedral. Uh, monthly, we, we serve about a, a hundred families from within San Antonio that come to our church monthly. That will be going on on that impact day right here in San Antonio. Amen. The blood drive will be going on. Amen. There's a lot of services. There'll be prayer for those that needing prayer. Again, it's designed for the total man. Our leader, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, he's a visionary leader. Pray God, but he's one that gets results. Come on in, somebody. I said he gets results. Let's thank God for him. And so this is that initiative. Impact Day. Somebody say Impact Day. On April the 13th, pray God, right here at this headquarters. It's happening throughout Texas. Houston is happening. Austin is happening. And throughout our state and nation and around the world to impact 100, 100,000 at least individuals and families on that particular day. I want you to join with us. Amen. Be a part of it. And listen, the cost of everything is the best price. It's free. Come on in, somebody. I said free. Somebody give God praise right down through there. Tonight, 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 we have a gospel preacher. Come on. I said we have a gospel preacher. <laughs> Not only is he a gospel preacher, he is a great pastor. Just, amen, his church just celebrating 25 years, amen, starting from scratch, starting from ground zero, 25 years in the ministry, the greater harvest, church of God in Christ. Come on, let's, pray, let's praise God for that. 25 years. I've seen him. I've seen him operate, pray God, not only as I said a gospel preacher, but I've seen him operate as a great pastor. I see him growing and developing as a district superintendent. Amen. The superintendent, Alan Dixon, amen, he's the, the innovative and charismatic, charismatic founder and pastor of Greater Harvest. Amen. Assembly Church of God in Christ in Waco, Texas. That's here for Waco. That's where our headquarters are. Where he was born and raised. Amen. He's married to First Lady Lisa Dixon. Amen. Has three handsome sons and two beautiful daughters. Amen. He's served in ministry as a pastor since 1999. I've seen him move. And has constantly and consistently proclaimed the word of God. Amen. To multitudes across the country. Amen. He encourages and uplifts the body of Christ with the message that they are empowered for fulfillment. Because he motivates and inspires countless individuals to tap into God for the flow of blessings in their lives and affirms that there is no greater faith than the faith that God amen, has orchestrated for their lives. He passionately and fervently proclaims that it is not about our image, he says. There should be a projection of righteousness in our lifestyles, amen, and de which that demonstrates who Christ is. Amen. This demonstration of righteousness that is displayed and projected in the life of Superintendent Dixon, amen, is evident in his humility, his humanity, his godly character, and love for the people of God. He serves as, as superintendent of Harvest Institutional District. Come on, give him, give him some love. A district within Texas Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, amen, headed by yours truly. Superintendent Allen Dixon's life Life is also a living testament and godly example to all, allowing that God, showing that, that life with God is worth living. Pray God, after the choir has rendered this selection, then I want you to rest on your feet, amen, here and around the world, and receive none other than the superintendent, Alan Dixon. God bless you. Amen. Pray for the choir as we come with We Offer Praise under the direction of Dr. Bernard Roper.
it's for your goodness and your mercy toward us. I said it's for your goodness and your mercy toward us. If you don't mind lifting your hands just for a moment and honoring the Lord for who he is. For if we would be honest tonight, if it wasn't for the hand of God, we wouldn't be here tonight. But God, we praise you. Oh, I wish I had about 25 people that would lift your voice and just shout, God, we praise you. Oh, come on, I need you just for a moment. Lift your voice and shout, God, we praise you tonight. You've been so good to us. You made way out of no way. Healed us when we were sick. Gave peace to the troubled mind. Gave us joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's nothing to do but tell you thank you tonight. Come on, lift your voice and shout, God, I thank you tonight. God, I give you praise tonight. For God, you're worthy to be praised. Come on, lift your voice and shout, God, you're worthy to be praised. Come on, set this house. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. And we give you the praise tonight. In spite of all that we've gone through. In spite of every one of our tests. God, we still have a thank you. In spite of what we've cried about, we still have a praise within. So, God, we come to tell you thank you tonight. Come on, lift your voice and shout, thank you, Jesus. We honor your presence tonight. And we give you glory tonight. Come on, we give you glory tonight. Come on, we give you glory tonight. Uh, we give you glory tonight. God, we give you glory tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the furtherance of this service, have thine own way. In Jesus' mighty name. Word our lips tonight to utter the word that you would have us to give. In Jesus' name. Careful to give your name the praise and the glory for who you are. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, thank you, God. Amen. Before you see that, stop the music. I need you to lift your voice, clap your hands, and give God that praise that's deep within. I know you can do better than that. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Glory to God. Mm. Look at your neighbor tonight and tell him, neighbor, if he wasn't worthy of the praise. Come on, tell him again. If he's not worthy of the praise, come on, tell him, try my God. Because I know for sure that my God is worthy to be praised. Come on, I need a believer in here that know that God is worthy to be praised. Mm, hallelujah. God, we praise you tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. We count it a privilege and an honor to be here tonight to testify of his goodness and to establish that he's God and there's none like him nowhere. I don't know about your God, but my God answers my prayer. Do I have a witness in here? And I'm grateful to serve the true, the true and living God and to give credence unto him means so much to me. I know from which I've come. I know the things that God has done for me. It would be foolish for me to stand here and not tell you of the goodness of the Lord. 
because I know what he's done for me. Is there anybody that can take a moment and reminisce on the things that God has done for you? If you don't mind, have a brief testimony service and look at somebody and tell them I can't begin to tell you all that the Lord has done. But I'm here to tell you that he's done so much for me. Oh my God, that I can't tell it all. Come on, glory to God. Glo glory to God. Some of y'all can only testify when you got a crowd. But all I need is space and opportunity to tell you what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Come on, wave that hand and shout hallelujah. Come on, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and shout glory to you. together in the household of faith and not give him praise. I wish I had another witness right there that I must shout and give God glory. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm excited about this night, this night, not because I'm up tonight, but I tell you, if I didn't have the mic, I still got to praise. If I wasn't on to, to minister tonight, I still got to praise. I, I want you to watch me when I'm not preaching. I promise you I'll give God the glory. Why? Because he's been too good to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. I feel, I feel, I feel a hey, hey coming on in here. <laughs> My God, so. Oh mm, glory to God. Come on, shout it again. Glory to God. Yeah, uh, yeah. I said, lift your voice and shout glory to God. So we praise him tonight for his goodness and his mercy. Let me move forward tonight, share in the word of God. Hold on, Minister Craig. Let me see if it work without the music. Let me. him the praise and glory tonight. Mm. I'm excited about the moment. I'm praising God for what he has done and what he's about to do. And I praise him tonight for another chance to reverence his holy name. I want to share um, and give honor and respect. I, I saw him walk out, but I need to honor and respect my leader. Yeah. I need the people of God to celebrate with me 
Bishop Shelton C. Rose. Come on, will you do that for me? Oh, come on, y'all can help me do better than that. Hallelujah. I'm not here because of appointment. I'm here because of the direction of God. That there were choices before that I could have uh, made to be in other places. I heard your brother. Uh, this decision was uh, that which was established by the move of God. And, and I thank God for the direction in which he's given us, the instructions in which we are following to uh, support such a great leader. I say to support such a great leader as Bishop Shelton C. Rose. Amen. And he gave us a chance to come and be a part of such a great jurisdiction. I, I wish I had a better witness than this. And I'm here because of God's leading and direction. I praise him and I honor him uh, for what he has done. My bishop has showed love and uh, he's really been supportive in my life. And I see uh, the ability of a father in him. And I see where he's really planted some things already in my life to cause me to be who I am. And I praise God for that. I had such uh, challenging times at the death of my oldest brother. And uh, I didn't know uh, that my bishop would get on his motorcycle. <laughs> drive all the way to Waco, Texas and come see about my brother in his final stages of life. Prayed for my brother and my brother was encouraged by our leader. And not only that, he would show up at my house and, and show his love and pray for us. We have somebody. Oh, come on, help me celebrate our leader. Come on, y'all got to do better than that. Come on, I'm talking about Bishop Rose tonight. So we celebrate him tonight and his love for the people of God. I thank God for the administrative assistants, F.O. Patterson and uh, Michael Johnson. Come on, amen. Praise God for them. And uh, uh, the chairman of the elders and pastors council. Praise God for our superintendent uh, Johnson. Amen. Um, praise God for our Ains chairman, Superintendent Hobson. Amen. Will you do give God praise for him and also uh, uh, the chairman over the elders council. I praise God for our superintendent Irving. Did I get that right? Ordination. Thank you for helping me tonight. I'm still brand new at this, uh, but I praise God for great leaders and all the pastors. Uh, we honor elders and ministers, and we honor each of you. Let me celebrate our, our great mother tonight, uh, the supervisor of women. Let's praise God for Mother Ford tonight. God bless you tonight. We honor you. Also, we praise God. Mother, mother is such a unique person in her own way. She came to Waco, and I'm going to have to bring her back so that she can be a blessing to us. Amen. We praise God for her. And also, we thank God for the first lady of this jurisdiction. Amen. Mother Deborah Rose, Lady Deborah Rose. Amen. Come on, celebrate her tonight. And the assistance to Mother Ford, each of you, we honor you tonight. And let me uh, uh, give uh, love, honor, and respect to my wife for 35 years. Yeah. Girl, you better stand up tonight. Hallelujah. Look at that diamond over there. <laughs> hey, praise God for my lovely wife. She's looking so good. Would you stand again for me? Looking like she stepped out of a Essence magazine. Praise God for my wife. I, I, I love her dearly, and I praise God for what he's doing for us, even in our marriage. I know what heaven feels like because I live with an angel. Amen. 
that might help some of your brothers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank God for that lady in my life. I wanted her to stand again because I don't want you new brothers to get a revelation. <laughs> Let me move forward to the word <laughs> of God. I'll preach a long time tonight because it was indicated that I would be up long tonight. So I must identify uh, with that people that Jesus identified with. Oh, oh you, ye of little faith. <laughs> better start believing right now <laughs> but let me share in the word of God I thank God for the church that I serve the district uh, we appreciate each of you and those who were able to come uh, we thank God for you um, I want to go into the word of God if you would John ninth chapter I, I really enjoyed our administrative assistant on last night come on y'all give it up for superintendent Johnson will you do that I want to read from John 9, 4 through 5, and then we'll continue in 2 Thessalonians 2. I want to read verse 5 through 10. If you're there, you ought to respond by saying amen. 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 I want you to hear the reading of God's word tonight. Uh, Minister Clayton will help us tonight as he reads the particular chapters that we presented tonight. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Amen for the reading and the hearers of God's word. Be seated for a moment. It is our awesome task to share, to bring forth an understanding of what has been presented tonight. I do take it as a task in which God has called us to fulfill. And I've asked God that any time that I mount the podium or the pulpit, that he, that he would give me a timely word to minister to God's people. So I, I've asked God to always allow me to be graced with his presence, that he would always use us to address his people. So for topic or subject tonight, I want to talk about a godly work in the midst of lawless challenges. Come on and say with me, a godly work in the midst of lawless challenges. What would be the significance of this, these particular writings? How are these words parallel in meaning? How can we gain now what is necessary from this particular selection of scripture. Well, I'm glad you asked. They both present 
a duty to be fulfilled. Not only a duty, but also a condition that brings about challenges. The word, the word that, 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 that's before us is obvious in the statement that, that, that we are now to see the significance of what God is doing. It brings forth a condition. It brings forth a challenge. It brings forth a setting in which we are able to discover the works of God. I must present to you today that it is necessary that we discover who we are working for. I've discovered that we have come to a place to where we have hired ourselves. We put ourselves on our own employment role and we are operating without direction from God. But it's necessary that we understand who hired us, who has called us, what is now the significance of the matter and how we are to deal with the condition at hand. Why? Because the condition will bring about a challenge that will really deal with us as we now occupy in this capacity. As we take the initiative to be the front leaders of a society that has come to a place to where they don't realize that we need God. Oh, I wish I had about 20 people that would look over at somebody that would tell them we got to have God in this. Oh, I wish you would really talk to somebody tonight and tell them we must have God in this. Uh, because without God, then we are already doomed and damned. So the scripture gives an indication of what we should gain from the significance of the matter. The significance which expresses the qualities of being worth our attention. What is worth our attention? What is the condition? It's the state of something with uh, regards to its appearance. The qualities are the working order. How can we do something concerning this condition? Uh, what is the challenge? It's the invite to take part in now the confrontation or dispute that projects the opposition of the matter. There is an opposition that we must face as the church. Yes, I know that we got work to do, but if we don't address the work like we should, we're already defeated by the enemy. Oh, I wish I could get someone to say amen up in here. So the Bible declares that as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. The Bible said a man blind from birth and his disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? I wish you would take note of that and see what we should see. Let us bring this particular writing into now a interwoving production. It, it is obvious that there is a condition, but let us view now uh, the perspective of both onlookers, those who are now observing the matter. If we would, we take notice of Jesus. Uh, it's Jesus now that identifies with the need. But it's the disciples that identify with the sin. Well, I need to help you tonight uh, to understand that if we're going to deal with it, then we must understand the perspectives of the matter. 
uh, we must learn how to gain now the particular attitude toward the way of regarding the matter. How can we deal with it? I know that we could easily talk about all the sin that's obvious. Uh, we could always talk about what somebody did that was wrong. But I need you to understand that if we're going to be helpful in this time and season and do the work that God requires of us to do, then we must discover and see the way Jesus sees it. And we got to learn to pull away from the way that the disciples see it because it brings about a problem when we're always addressing the sinner but never dealing with the condition. I don't have enough people talking to me tonight. Jesus, see the need. Touch your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, your work is to see the need. Come on and talk to your neighbor and tell him again, neighbor, you've got to see the need of the matter. We can't just point the fingers at those who have come short of the glory of God because the Bible declares that all have sinned. God, I wish I had some help up in here and come short of the glory of God. And if you feel like you can eliminate yourself, then you're wrong tonight because the Bible declared that such was some of you. I don't know about you, but I always take the time to recall the moment that God brought me out. Do I have about 25 in here to know that God brought you out of your situation? I don't need you to tell me what he brought you out of. I just need you to recognize that he brought you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. God help me up in here. Lift your hands and say God help us to identify with the condition. Here the disciples play the blame game. They see the sin but they don't see how to deal with with the condition. One day I was at my grandmother's house and you know when you go over to grandmother's she puts you to work. I thought I had some people in here. And while being there she saw spider webs in the corner and she told me to get that old broom and sweep down the webs. But I noticed after time had lapsed and time had expired, here come the webs again. And she said, baby, I know how to deal with the matter. If we're going to get rid of the webs, we got to kill the spider. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Touch your neighbor and tell them we can always talk about sin. But how? can we deal with the sin? Oh, I don't have enough people in here talking back to me. I said, how is it that we can deal with the matter that's at hand? Or oh, we could keep talking about it, but sin will always be on the face of the earth. And we'll always have to deal with liars and cheaters and backstabbers and those who live the life that's not pleasing to God. But what is the purpose of the church? What are we doing to change the life of those who are around us day by day? day and we have nothing to say what happened to the witness of God's people I need a witness look at somebody and tell them we need another witness it's necessary that we see the text as it projects four features that highlights this healing number one the problem that precipitated the healing number two the purpose for the man being born blind. Number three, the power that heals him. Number four, the perplexities of the people who saw the healing. Something has to happen concerning what's going on. But the church has become like the early first century Jews. The disciples thought that sin was the primary. Uh, uh, if not uh, exclusive, it caused all suffering. In this uh, uh, instance, however, Jesus made it clear that the personal sin was not the reason for the blindness. 
How can I make that clear? Because let me tell you, the Bible says that he was born blind. He could not even sin because he, he did not live a life and he had, ex he had not extended his life to where he could see it. He was a baby born blind. I, I need to know how can we handle the condition before one grows up? How can we deal with the matter before one can even recognize the sin? I need to know how can we deal with what has plagued the world? and cause men uh, to turn away from God. How can we deal with uh, a situation uh, that's before us every day and we sit on our comfortable seats as though we don't have a reason to give God what's due unto him. We got to beg folk to work in the kingdom and once, once you have troubles and sorrows and situation, you quit on God as though you don't have a reason to push past what you're going through, but I'm here to encourage you tonight that you've got to wake up, O Zion. It's time to be about our Father's business. Come on and encourage somebody and tell them tonight it's time for you to be about your Father's business. Am I at liberty to do that? Okay, let me move on. It's time for us to be about our Father's business. Y'all, we're spending time, but we're wasting time. We're gathering, but we're not affected. Oh, God, I wish I had some people. We're closing our church doors, and we really haven't discovered the real reason why we're gathering. That when we come to a meeting like this, it should enhance your life for the next time when you go back home, you ought to have a fire in you to do the will of God. We're not just here to hang out, but there is a purpose. Yes, Touch your name and tell them you got to discover your purpose. You got to ask God, God, what is it that I need to be doing in this trying time? How can you enhance my witness? Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your hands and shout glory to God. We as a people of God, we don't know how to connect with purpose that's in the lives of sinners. God, thank you, Jesus. We don't know how to connect with those who don't know about the church. Uh, you just can't go before everybody and cast now uh, pearls before swine. That must be a tactic or strategy. You've got to know how to win this world. God, I wish I had some people in here. You can't always talk about what they got on. God, I wish I had some help. Anybody going to help me in here? You can't always magnify the makeup and the lipstick. I've discovered that people talk about what they know about. And because they talk about that kind of stuff, they don't know about what God can do and the power and the authority that God has given us for such a time as this. But I come to shake the building tonight and tell you that it's time that you recognize the God-given authority that you have. You don't even know how to win your son. You don't even know how to win your daughter. You got them living in your house, but you're afraid to preach the gospel in your house. You'll preach everywhere else, but you won't mount the podium in your house. But I tell you, every day that I wake up, I'm talking about what the Lord can do. As for me in my house, we're going to serve. We're going to serve serve the Lord come on lift your hands and say God have your way in me after this night after this week I'll be about my father's business God I don't have enough people in here come on lift your hands and say God after this night after this week I won't be the typical saint that I once was, but you're about to change something in me. You're about to stir up something in me. You're about to create a new fire in me. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and shout glory to you. Yes, sir. So the parents were not responsible. 
the child was not responsible. But it was a connection. It was what God ordered. While you're calling it the devil, it's God all the time. Oh, God, I don't have enough people in here. Come on and look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, while you're casting out the devil, it's God all the time staring up a fire in you. God, I don't have enough people in here. So Jesus had to give an answer. It was not that the man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Can I tell you something? The thing that qualifies you for the kingdom is being disqualified. I found out something, mother, that I had to sin so that I can know who Jesus is. God, I don't have enough people. I had to have a condition so that he could minister to my need. God, I wish I had some other folk in here. Y'all need to stop acting like you've been saved all your life. I need you to look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, you don't want the old me to come back. You ought to pray that I stay under the blood of Jesus because I would be a danger to society. I would be one who would wreak havoc in the life of innocent people. But I'm so glad that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature and all things are passed away. I wish you would wave to your past and tell him it's over that God has established a new life in me. Come on. So while you're trying to disqualify me, Come on. God has qualified me. Yes. Oh, glory to God. I'm closing. I got to get out of here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So he says, I must work the works of him that sent me. Come on and look at somebody and tell them, we must work. Come on, stare up somebody next to you and tell them, we must work. Tell them, you got to get out of your place of complaining. Tell them, we got to work. It's something to do around here. God, I don't have enough people in here. Come on and tell them, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been around the ministry. It's something for you to do around here. i got to encourage y'all because some of y'all are discouraged where you are. You have an age battles and you feeling like the young have forgotten about you. But I'm here to stir up the mothers today night and tell you there's a work to do. I'm here to stir up the ushers and tell you there's a work to do. I'm here to stir up the choir members and tell you there is a work to do. I'm here to stir up the ministers, the elders, the superintendents, the pastors, everybody that's here. There is a work to do. This world is dying and they need an answer. We need, we need an answer. Hallelujah. It's good that we have leaders like Bishop Sheer, that he gives a general vision to the church. We've got work to do. When I heard it, it stirred up something in my spirit. I don't feel like I want to quit. I feel like I want to go forward. Touch somebody and tell them I got to go forward now. Something in me that just won't let me quit. Jeremiah said it was just like fire. Come on. Oh, glory to God. Shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Let me quit here. Let me take you to this passage quickly. Night comes. Look at somebody and tell them night comes. Night has a significance. Night comes. The darkness has a special reference. Night comes. There comes a time when the work is not presented. There comes a time when you're not able to present the work. There comes a time when you must become the sacrifice. Are you listening to me tonight? Let me show you in the text and I close. Because night presents the time of lawlessness. 
night comes in its form to discourage the church. To bring us to a place of giving up on the assignment. I'm here to prophesy while I preach and tell you that many of us are about to face some challenges that God permits in our lives. I need y'all to hear me tonight because there was a problem among those who were part of Thessalonica. And the scripture gives an indication as Paul addresses them, he says, now concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and are being gathered together to him. He said, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind. Or, he says, he talks about, or alone, either by a spirit or a spoken word, or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. I want you to see that it was a confusion in the midst of them. Because they were thinking that the day of the Lord was then. And it was the offsetting of the enemy to cause them not to see the hour. I want y'all to hear tonight what's happening in the body of believers. That the enemy is trying to confuse the body of believers. He's working to bring about a confusion. I got to help y'all to understand uh, that we're already claiming things to be like they are to be. And we're already saying uh, that things uh, are going to get better. But I need to pose a, a, a statement tonight and help you to understand that before they get better, they've got to get worse. Are y'all listening to me tonight? Because night comes. Come on and look at somebody and tell them night comes. Uh, he said, uh, don't be quickly shaken. Uh, and he uses the terminology of an earthquake. And, and he talks about how uh, the anchor uh, slips. It's slipping. It's Amara. And in, in the midst of a heavy wind, uh, we've got to understand that the storm is coming. Oh, I, I got to prophesy to y'all tonight while I preach and tell you that the storm is coming. Uh, he, he's about to allow the storm to blow in the church. Uh, some things are about to happen that's going to really challenge you where you are. Uh, you're wanting position and titles, but you don't know what comes with what you're asking for. Uh, you're wanting to be up before people, but you don't know what comes with this situation. You're wanting to pastor, but you don't know what comes with the matter. Lord have mercy. You want to be superintendent, but you don't know what comes with the matter. I, I know you want to be the state supervisor, but you don't know what comes with the matter. That God is about to allow some things to shake the church. I'm here to remind you you that there's a whole lot of shaking going on. That God is about to shake up some things uh, to put you back down on your knees, uh, to put you back on your face where you belong. Anybody want to hear any more? So here was the problem. The saints were to the point of saying, we are ready to be raptured. But what God was saying, no, it's not rapture time. It's suffering time. Mm. Touch somebody and tell them, it's not rapture time yet. It's suffering time. The church is about to suffer some things. God, I need y'all to lift your hands and say, God, help me. As you appoint me to the time of suffering. As you call 
me to this time of suffering. God, you got to help me because if you don't help me, I'll throw in the towel. If you don't help me, I'll quit. Oh, God, help me here. If you don't help me, I'll forget about being faithful. I'll go home and do nothing. I'll get mad when they don't call my name. If you don't help me, I'll lose my prayer life. God, you've got to help me. Come on, lift your hands all over the building and shout, God, we need your help. Come on and lift your voice again and shout, God, we need your help. We need your help. If you don't help us, pastors, we'll close the doors and quit preaching. Oh, God, if you don't help, we won't be the witness that you call us to be. So he says, and I'm closing. Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come. Watch this. Unless the rebellion comes first. Oh God. The rebellion, the day of the Lord cannot occur until a deliberated abandonment occurs until a, 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 an alliance or a commitment occurs. The term was used to refer to military, political, or religious rebellion. That you're going to see a world in its best of rebellion. It's going to seem to be that when you witness, you are of no effect. It's going to seem to be that when you pray, that nothing changes. It's going to seem to be that when we gather, we are getting nothing out of it. Oh, my God, but God, you've got to help us in a day of rebellion. God, you've got to help us in this time when uh, many uh, love has waxed cold. God, you've got to help us when there's a falling away from the church. God, I wish I had some help up in here. You've got to help us when people don't want to go to prayer meeting. God, you've got to help us when it seems that YPW don't even mean anything. Uh, they'll sit through the course and go through the class, but still have now the things on their minds to fulfill. I don't have enough people in here. You can pray with them and try to pray them through, but they'll still tell you that I'm still feeling some kind of way. This is the day where men will not present their faith uh, to connect with the word of God so that their life Lives can change. Lord have mercy. I wish I had some help up in here. God, you've got to help me preach up in here because it's a new day now. And some of us are not aware of what God is allowing. Yes, sir. It's the day of men of lawlessness. No boundaries. Nothing matters. No good morals. Oh, God, it's a day when a father will abandon his whole family. Yeah. It's a day when a mother will be at odds with a daughter. Yeah. It's a day when the son would not have the relationship with his father. Oh, God, I wish I had some people in here. It's a day where a world or a nation would take anybody as president yeah. and endorse their wrong. God, I don't we don't have even a peer candidate to even run and lead this nation. I heard a man say the other day that if Mr. Trump wins and he go to jail, he can lead me from jail. I don't have enough witnesses in here. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We're living in a day and time to where nothing matters. Anything goes. Not only is it in the world, but it's in the church where anything goes. We don't reverence the house like we used to. Now man can come in the sanctuary and leave his hat on. I remember when they wouldn't even allow you to come in the building with your hat on. And you can go to court and they got a big sign say, take your hat off and you'll honor an unworthy judge. Instead of you honoring God, who's the savior of the world. Yes, Something's wrong with this world. I got to get out of here. 
Come on, lift your hands and say, God, help us. So it's the day of a lawlessness. The text presents a man of sin. The act of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is one who counters the things of God. Operates in things that are parallel but without power. Are you listening to me? Without the power of God. Let me go on and close this thing. So God presents the hour. He's been working to restrain it and, and stop it. But the day comes to where he will no longer stop it. He forces down uh, the moment before us. When there was a time when he held it back, he restrained the forces. The Bible declares that even in the scripture that human government stopped it. Preaching of the gospel stopped it. The binding of Satan stopped it. The church stopped it. The Holy Spirit stopped it. Michael stopped it. Whatever now uh, restrains the Antichrist and, and from being revealed in the fullness of uh, apostasy and evil must be more than human. Uh, it's got to be, be even beyond the angelic power. Angels can't stop what God speaks. God is about to give a command to stir up the church. He's about to bring Satan at his best. He's about to challenge us in places we haven't been challenged. He's about to bring some suffering that we haven't suffered. He's about to bring us into a place that we've never been before. But I'm here to encourage you tonight that if God be for us, oh my, who can be against us? I know that night is coming, but I heard him say, blessed is the man who remains steadfast yes. while under trial. Yes, I don't need you to be steadfast after I bring you out. But while you're going through, you've got to learn, oh, yeah, 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 to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of him, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Touch your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, I can't give up now. Come on and tell him I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me hey, 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 that the road would be easy. But I, I don't believe. I need you to grab somebody by the hand and tell them I don't believe that God brought me this far to leave me. Come on and encourage your neighbor and tell them to hang in there. Oh, yeah. Come on and tell them, hang in there. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable. I don't have enough people in here. Always abounding in the works of him. Are y'all listening to me tonight? You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, he said, beware, lest least you always also fall from your own steadfastness. Be led away with the errors of weakness. Wickedness is upon the land, but grow in grace. I don't have enough people talk to your neighbor and say grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and forever touch your neighbor and tell him neighbor no matter what comes God will see us through how many of y'all believe that I don't have enough witnesses in here I said how many of y'all believe that therefore we all so, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnared us and let us run. Come on and look at somebody and tell them, run. Run with 
endurance, uh, the race that's set before you. Uh, you can't quit now, uh, for the race uh, is not given to the swift, uh, not the battle to the strong, uh, but he that endureth. Uh, grab somebody by the hand uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, endure. Uh, it may get hard, uh, but endure. Uh, you may have to cry, uh, but endure. Uh, how many of y'all know he'll bring you out? Uh, you may have to go through. Uh, you may have to cry. Uh, but weeping uh, endures for the night. Uh, but joy, joy uh, comes in the morning. Uh, shout yes. Uh, touch your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I'm going wait until my change comes. Uh, I'm going wait uh, until God brings me out. Uh, he will uh, bring us out. Uh, he will uh, make a way out of no way. Uh, shout yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive that word. Maybe there's one tonight. Somebody right here in this sanctuary. You're ready. You've been in the valley of decision. And you're ready. Can I pray? Yes. I need y'all to stand all over the building and connect. No, hold up, hold up. I need you to run to the altar. Everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Make your way. Mm. Because of what God is doing, if he doesn't shorten the days of sorrow, the very elect will be deceived. You who are chosen, you're throwing the towel. I want to encourage my leader. Bishop, no matter what comes, God is with you. God, I don't have nobody here. Come on, I need some people up in here. I said, no matter what comes, God is with you. Mother, no matter what comes, God is with us. It's some things that God is permitting. Oh, it looks grand and good. But when they say safety and peace, it's sudden destruction. This nation, your nation, where we reside, is in trouble economically, spiritually. Morally, so many things are happening. And as I read my Bible, I'm no longer surprised. It's fulfillment. See, the church is not to be surprised by what's going on. How will we know you're coming back? That he's going to reveal some signs. And what's killing the church is that we're not observing the signs. I'm revealing to the church what I'm to do next. But you are surprised by it. There is a prophetic utterance that's going forth and it's not about houses and cars. It's about the anchoring of your soul. Go. 
Oh God, I wish I had somebody come on and talk to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, it's no longer about your car and your house. You can get one if you live right. Uh, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, he'll bless you there. But it's your good fight of faith that's going to sustain you in the trying time. God, we've got to believe you. I believe you for this, but help my unbelief. Come on, lift your hands. Oh. I said, God, no longer do I want to just be a pastor with a title, but God, you help me where the struggle is. Help me where the suffering is. Help me to be committed to you. Because if you don't help me, I'll throw in the towel. Come on, I need you to lift your voice and say, God, help me tonight. Uh, many of you are going through things that you'll never talk about. And you're going through things that are happening in the church and you never talk about them. But you need to lift your hands and say, God, help me tonight. Oh. Oh, God, oh, God, God, I need your help. Some leaders have become so frustrated. It does you no good to cover it up. It's for you to come boldly before the throne of grace. God, whatever I need you to do, I let it be known, God, I need your help. Because we're in the midst of challenging times. If you don't help me where I am, I'll quit in my mind. I still have the form. It'll look like I'm a part of the church, but I come within myself to a place of quitting, going through just to get the offering, going through just to keep my title. But God, if you strip me of my title, if you take away all of those things, I still need your spirit. I still need your presence. Oh, I need you, God. This is what I want everybody to do. If you need God, if you don't need him, then you can go to your seat. But if you need God, I need you to lift your voice and shout, God, I need you right now. Help me before night comes. Help me to stay with the commitment before night comes. Help me to be committed before night comes. Don't let me just be around here, hanging around, being praised by men. But God, I need you to praise my life. I need you to be happy with me. As you cry, God is helping you. As you reach up, God is helping you. As you ask God, he's helping you. As you cry before him, he's helping you. God, I need your help. In the private affairs of my life, help me, God. Help these people that are acting like it's right, but they know it's not right. Help those people that are covering up like they, like they can't reveal it to you. God, help. Night come. Help us, God. Night is coming. Help us, God. I need your help. So when you press me while I'm in the garden of Gethsemane, I won't quit. I'll say nevertheless, if it be your will. God, I need some people in here that'll lift your voice and shout nevertheless. God, if it be your will for me to suffer, suffer these things, then have your way in me. God, if it be your will, then have your way in me. If it's your will, have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way in me. Come on, lift your voice and shout. Have your way in me. Save me again. Deliver me again. Set me free again. Have your way. Oh, 
And God, I'll praise you. God, I'll give you the glory. Come on, God, I'll give you the praise. God, I'll magnify you. Come on, I need some people that before he brings you out, you will praise him before he brings you out. Touch your body and tell him this praise. It's before I come out. This worship is before he delivers me because I'm assured that he is able. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise him, young lady. Praise him. Come on. Praise him up in here. Praise him tonight. Give him glory tonight. Praise him, mother. Praise him. Praise him right there. Give him glory tonight. I hear him saying, I've come to minister to your request. I've come to lift a heavy burden. I've come to give you life. Life more abundant. But I need you to grab somebody by the hand and tell them, neighbor, I discovered something. That even though he ordered a time of suffering, but tell them, neighbor, God has also ordered my survival. I will make it through. I will come out as pure gold. I may have to go into the fire, but I won't come out smelling like smoke. I wish I had some people in here. I may have to go in the lion's den, but God will change the appetite of the lion. Have I got a witness in here? I wish I had somebody that know that God didn't leave you. He didn't lead you here to be overtaken, but he will bring you out of every situation. And I hear him saying that I'm going to give you rest over every one of your enemies. I'm going to give you rest over every one of your burdens. I'm going to give you rest. Touch your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, in a chaotic time, God's going to give us rest. In the night time, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to be at peace. Shout yeah. Come on, come on. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, you're with us. Lord, you're with us. Lord, you're with me. Give him and pray. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and believe it. Come on and believe it. Hey, hey, hey. Glory. Never stand it again.
mercy of God. Somebody ought to thank God for the grace of God. He didn't have to send us a word to wake out of sleep. Come on there, somebody. To wake out of sleep, praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me, he said, in him, you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. He said, be brave. Be courageous. I've overcome the world. How many overcomers in here today? How many overcomers in here today? The name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into and is safe. So these things are coming up on us, praise God. But if you stay in Him, if you stay in Him, rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in faith. Hallelujah. Our safety is in the Lord. Not some kind of false peace, some kind of false safety. When men say peace and safety, from their standpoint, then sudden destruction. But for the believer, pray God, listen, God is for us today. Come on in, somebody. God is for us. Amen. We're going to go through some things. Going to go through some things. But God will sustain you. Some of you are going through some things right now, but God is sustaining. How many know he's faithful? How many know he's faithful? Praise God. What a blessing. Thank you, Superintendent Dixon, for that word on tonight. Amen. He, God, Jesus. What a blessing. He was talking to some young saints right there, some young saints. And they didn't have, they didn't have 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians written before them, praise God. That's what he just sent them fresh off the press, praise God. We, we have the word, a more sure word of prophecy, the word of God, to know that God is in control. Suffering, if you suffer with him, we'll reign with him, praise God. Amen. I want to thank God for that word on tonight. Praise God. Come on here, somebody. You may look at our political political situation in the U.S. You say, well, two, right, two wrongs don't make a right. Whatever it is, but God is in control. Come on here, somebody. I say, God is in control. We keep our trust in him. Praise God. Let's give God praise for that word on tonight. A timely word. An uplifting word. 
praise God, one that will hold us, amen, in times like these, amen. Be sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. That rock is Jesus, y'all. Come on, some of that rock is Jesus. Amen. And thank God. Come on. He told us tonight. He said, yeah, you may wound up. It may look like a, it may be a lion's den, but I'm going to ask you, the same one get you in it, did, did, will he get you out of it? Uh, Daniel didn't get his, it wasn't self-inflicted. He didn't get himself in the lion's den. He was following the ways of the Lord. The same one got him in it for his glory. Pray God. He's the one that got him out of it. And my Hebrew boys that went in that fiery furnace, the same one got him in it because they stood for him. He's the same one got him through it and got him out of it. Let's keep our trust in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Dixon, because, amen, for the church to awake out of sleep. Amen. It's time. We've got work to do to reach souls, as Jude said, some just pulling them out of the fire, even hating the garments that are stained by sin. We've got work to do. Amen. So thank you for the fresh focus. Amen. To get our mind where it needs to be. Amen. In a mode that got to on the Lord, our mind on the Lord, looking unto Jesus. Amen. The author and the finish of our faith. Put those hands together all over the house one more time. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you for that word on tonight. They were unclear about some things. Amen. They were unclear. And what you do is ask. Amen. They ask. And there's a young little church. He left them after about three Sabbath days after they had been, he had been with them about three Sabbath days and had to leave them because of persecution. But he wrote them back, pray God, tell them to hold on and answer their questions, pray God. Amen. He that doesn't work shouldn't eat. Pray God. You can't just sit around and say, I'm waiting for Jesus to come back. Praise God, we've got to occupy till he come. Take possession of it till he come. One more time, let's give Jesus a hand one more time. Let us share a ministry, a ministry offering with, amen, uh, a ministry offering, a program, a program. Uh, wow, I mean. Lord Jesus. Wow, what, what can you say after such a powerful word coming out of John chapter 9? Verse yes. through uh, four through five, Second Thessalonians, two five through ten, a godly work in, in the, the midst, midst of, of lawless, lawless challenges. Lord, help yes. me. Help me. Tonight's word was again an opportunity for us to self-assess yes. ourselves because this requires action on our part. It's one thing we can say amen, we can tell the preacher to preach all day long, but if we don't apply this word to us to ensure that we are in prep and, uh, in position to do the work that God has called us, yes. I believe it's in vain. But I tell you, I'm leaving tonight receiving the word of God. A prophetic word that is also a sobering word, understanding that we're living in a time where there are absolutely no boundaries in every area from the political front to the moral front to the family front and even in the church. We've got to be able to uh, identify yeah. with the condition yeah. and address the sin. My God. He, yes. I mean, I, I, you know, I, let me just show y'all. I mean, <laughs> I have so many notes on this page and I was telling Missionary Hardy before we came amen live that I don't even know where to even begin in terms of just how to to sum to sum this up but at the end of the day he talked about amen the problem he talked about the purpose he talked about yes. the power and then he talked about um, the the perception or the preparation rather excuse me but what he really what stuck to me was he said I want you to watch the text the text showed the disciples asking the question who sinned was it him or was it his parents yes. focused on the problem, focused on the sin, but then he showed where Jesus was focused on how to even allow for that person to even get through that very moment. And I thought, I said, wow, I mean, at the end of the day, how we oftentimes will judge somebody by their cover and what we yes. see, but we miss the part of that there's still a heart, there's still a soul. Right, right. How do we address the sin, the problem, so that they too can be free. You know, Superintendent Hobson, you come from the human services background, and I myself have had the opportunity to fund and support that work as well. You know, we call it root cause. Yes. 
Yes. And that's what Jesus was working with, root cause. Yeah, root cause. Yeah, root, cause. root cause to bring glory yeah. and honor yeah. to God. Yeah, because at the end of the day, everything that's done, it doesn't bring. I mean, I might be the catalyst. Uh, Superintendent Dixon might have been the catalyst tonight yes. to deliver this word, but it ain't about him. It brings all of us back to a place where we glorify, glorify the, Father, the Father, which is in heaven. And when we understand that he, as the as the prophet spoke tonight, he ordained this season of suffering oh my God. to bring us back to a place of repentance and to posture us to be able to perform the godly work. There is work, but God is calling us to do a godly work you know, in these lawless times. You know, we oftentimes, and I thought about that too, we oftentimes focus on, you know, he's bringing me out, he's bringing me through the storm, he's going to give me this, he's going to give me that. But we fail to also talk about the God who will allow for yes. the storm and the suffering to come. Yes. Uh, we got to remember that even in, 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 our, in our word, it encourages us that trouble's not going to last always. always. At the end of the day, when trouble comes, he will make a way of yes. escape. But while he's making the way of escape, and we talked a little bit about this in our noonday session today, he's going to take uh, make you make the way of escape with the very thing that you're suffering, that you're suffering in. in. <laughs> he's going to make the way of escape with the trial, with the temptation. He's going to make a way of escape. Soup, you're preaching. I'm trying not to. Uh, man, listen, I am <laughs> so full. Listen, let me transition <laughs> before I get myself in trouble. Listen, tonight, if that word has blessed you, I told you that yeah. those of you that are in our virtual sanctuary, you too are just as important, not just for what you're getting ready to do monetarily, but you are important because God sees your heart and he knows where you are and he wants to bless you. Not that you give because you are wanting to be blessed, but you're giving because you are blessed. blessed. The Lord has certainly opened up a door and allowed for you to receive a word tonight yes, that hallelujah. many of you have prayed God if you don't speak tonight I don't know what's getting ready to happen well you got the opportunity to hear the word now let's put action behind that Amen. and let's sow this seed not only into this word but into this man of God's life two ways to give at the bottom of your screen right now uh, cash app dollar sign TSW 2 NDOPS and then our give LaFly, give LaFi platform Texas Southwest second ecclesiastical jurisdiction and I said on last night and I'll say it again please make sure you put in the memo section this is our consecration seed. Yes. We're believing tonight that the word of God is going to continue to make a harvest in our lives. We pray also that if any of you out there do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, that you took advantage of the opportunity to give your life to Christ. Today is the start of a new day for you. And we praise God for those of you who have made that decision to follow Jesus. No, it, the way is not going to be easier at all. In fact, it may even be harder. But with God, nothing shall be impossible in this walk when we said yes Lord we will follow you in this walk his word declared that there shall be and there will shall be tribulation be. but at the end of the day can I tell you as the preacher said tonight be of good cheer because <laughs> he's already overcome everything that you and I will even face in our lives today yes. somebody ought to say thank God, thank for, God Jesus. for Jesus thank God My for Jesus God, thank God <laughs> For Jesus, who knew what we would go through and conquered it while he was here on earth. And the very things, amen, that we are experiencing today, can I encourage you? It's nailed to the cross. It's taken into yes. the depths of hell. He has the keys. Hallelujah. It's a finished work. He has the keys. Ah, glory and to got God. Up with all power. With all so that power. you, when you find yourself in despair, find yourself, amen, low, find yourself in operating in this lawlessness, amen, that surrounds us, you too can get up. Amen. Amen. And get up with the victory. With the victory. With, okay. Let me. Let me oh, we, you, you're yeah. preaching oh, again. God. Here we go again. <laughs> Tonight, two ways to give. Consecration seat in the memo section through our cash app, dollar sign TSW. 2ND OPS, and then our Give Fly platform tonight, Texas Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. I need you all to help me put in the com in the comment section, those of you all that are able to do so, just tell Superintendent Dixon we're praying yes, for you. Yes, yes. Amen, because you can't preach a word like, like that. that and not expect for the enemy to try his best, That's right. amen, to attack, because the devil is mad tonight, believe it or not, but we declare that we have the victory and we know it in Jesus' name. Come on, would you do that for me tonight? Tell Superintendent Dixon we are praying for him, whatever it is, that God would restore him, God would strengthen him, God would cover him, yes. amen, as he has delivered such a mighty and powerful word. Again, we are coming back here tomorrow morning for our morning glory, our morning manna, 
our noonday, our, our midday, rather, excuse me, sessions, and then we are getting ready to come back tomorrow night at the same time, 7.30, because who is gonna be here? The presiding bishop, the presiding chief bishop. apostle yes. of the churches of God in Christ worldwide, worldwide. the most reverend, yes. J. Drew Sheard. We are looking forward to him being with us on tomorrow night. And again, tell somebody, the Texas Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction under the leadership of Bishop Shelton Rhodes is live here in the city of San Antonio for our second Texas Southwest Second Ministers and Workers Conference, and we do not want you to miss it. Let me just pray a prayer for you. Yes. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Give us peace as we rest tonight. Yes, Wake us up renewed and in strength. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. God be with you.